Hello everyone, this is Wallen, and welcome to my first Sims 4 video. This one's going to be a really basic tutorial for create a sim mode. I'm going to go over all the parts of the face you can sculpt and how they work together. And many of you are probably going to know all this stuff already, so you can skip this video if you want to. Uh, if you're looking for advanced tips, I'll probably be making at least a second video where I actually show you how to create a sim. Um, but this one is very basic on just all the sliders and stuff on the face. Uh, also bear in mind that since this is still the demo, some things may change, and of course there are things I could miss or get wrong, so if I do, uh, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, let's get started with the first sim I created, and this is Daniel Patterson. So to start with, there are 11 parts of the face you can change, and all of these have multiple ways they can all be altered depending on the mode and the view. Uh, there's what we call standard mode, uh, which is what you're looking at right now. And then there's also detail edit mode, which you click anywhere on the face and then this uh, magnifying glass will pop up. So both of these do different things and to make a perfect sim, you're probably gonna be bouncing back and forth between the two of these a lot. So as I mentioned before, there are 11 different parts of the face. There is the face itself. There's the forehead, the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the cheekbones, the cheeks, the jaw, the chin, and the ears. Now, before I go into detail about each part, I'm going to mention something that's very important and very different from the previous Sims games, and that is the defaults. So when you click any part of the face, you're going to see these defaults over here on the right. And they're important because the minimum and maximum size of how you can change things is dependent on your default. So, for example, I'm going to click on the nose here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of varieties of different sizes. There's thin ones, there's wide ones. And so for example, if I try to make this thin nose as thin as possible, that's how thin I can get it to be. Whereas if I choose this wider nose and I try to make it as thin as possible, that's the max or the minimum that that one can be. So you can see that there's quite a bit of a difference. Well, in that case, there's a huge difference. So it's actually really important that you go through all the presets and kind of find which one you think is going to work for the sim you're going to make. If you're uh, making one after a celebrity or if you have a certain idea in mind that you want certain features. Um, so there are also a lot of things that can't be changed from the default because there's no sliders for them. And I know sliders isn't really a technical term for them anymore in Sims 4, but that's why I still call them anyway. Uh, so for example, the cupid's bow with the lips, uh, which is this top area of the lips that's shaped like a bow. The steepness of it is predominantly determined by the default. So you'll see on some of these, uh, like uh, right now, he's got that little dip right there, that V. This one on their hand has none at all and you can't change that or add it in later. You're stuck with whatever default you pick. So this actually applies to every part of the face. And for example, the eyes, the upper lid, the eyelashes, and the folds or dark circles under the eyes, those can't really be changed. And if you're making it after a celebrity or something, it's really critical that you get that right the first time because you can try to fix it with makeup but oftentimes it won't work at all especially if you're using a guy uh, most of them the makeup just won't work because it's too intense or there's not the color you're looking for um, that might change in the full version but right now we're stuck with what we have um, so the point is when you're creating sim it's really important that you start with picking good defaults first since no matter how far you get with the editing feature um, let's say uh, I got the eyes to be the right width and the right height but they're not the right shape or they don't have the right uh, eyelashes then once you pick a different default to try to correct that it goes back it resets to this default so the size has changed the width the height you're gonna have to redo all that. Um, so, yep, now that we got defaults out of the way, uh, we'll move on to each part of the face and how the defaults work and all the sliders that can be manipulated. Okay, we'll start with the actual face, which has its own button right up here. 
and you can see when I press it that there are a whole bunch of presets. Now the same rule applies with the presets that I mentioned before with the minimum and maximum of how much you can move things. However, if you use presets for individual parts of the face, then that will be the one that takes over and it'll look the same on any other face no matter which preset you pick. So for example, if I take this one here and I use this large nose down here, it's going to look exactly the same if I pick a different face and then pick the same nose again. So if you're going to be using a lot of presets, it's not a huge deal if you don't quite pick the right face because maybe there's not one that really look, goes with what you're looking for. Um, but otherwise, it is something you want to keep in mind. One other part of the face that I forgot to mention that's kind of important is up here, you can see skin details. And from here, you can get uh, you can add wrinkles to the forehead of your sim. You can add in the crease around the mouth. You can add freckles in around the entire face or just near the nose. There's also a beauty mark near the lip and also one on the side by the cheekbone. So for the forehead, the defaults mostly determine the folds and the highlights around the brow and also in some cases the shape of the eyebrows. So for example, I can click up here and then in this first one you can see that it kind of got a little bit darker between the eyes and also the eyebrows did move. In this one, there's a bit more highlight uh, above the brow. In this one, you might not be able to see it that well, but there's sort of like a V-shape now with the highlight, and so on and so forth. The most important thing about the forehead is that it also controls the width and the height of the face in both standard and detail mode. So, for example, you can grab it here, and you can make the face thinner. You can make it wider. Well, the whole head, actually, not just the face and you can also move it up or move it down. And you can do the same thing in detail mode. And slightly different movements. Um, but the other thing about it is that if you turn the head to the side, you can adjust the depth of the forehead. Okay, now let's move on to the brows. And so, again, the preset for the brows is pretty important because it just, you can't change how tall the brows are. So, for example, you can see that these brows are a lot taller and a lot thicker. Uh, you can adjust the length of them, but not really anything else. So, let's see, you can manipulate the brows in three different places from the front. So there's the center of the brow the edge of the brow, and the inner corner. And there's also one from the side. And you'll notice when you hover over different parts of the brow that the mouse cursor can show different icons. So for example, you see four different directional arrows right there. That mostly means that you can change the placement, the height, or the width. And the options will differ by depending on which part of the face we're talking about. Um, so by pulling the middle, uh, I can change the placement of the brows on the face. And then by pulling the edge, I can make the brow longer or shorter. And I can also raise the eyebrows or make them look droopy. And then sometimes, like here, the cursor changes to a circular arrow, what I call the angle tools. And that means the angle can be modified uh, from this point as well as directionally. So by selecting the inner corner, I can make the brow shorter or longer again. But also by moving up and down, I can change the angle of the entire brow. And from the side, I can change the height just like before. And also I can change the depth of the brows. In detailed mode, there is only one point you can change the brows, and that'll affect how angled or flat the brows will be by moving up and down. And you can also adjust where the peak of the brow is uh, by moving to the left or to the right. So you see right now it's more to the right side. If I move to the left, it shifts over to the left side over here. Moving on to the eyes, the eyes have three different places that you can change them from the front. There is the entire eye, the inner corner, and what I call the enlarger, uh, which I'll explain in a moment. 
but uh, grabbing the middle of the eye uh, affects where the placement of it is, affects the placement of the eyes as well as the brows. So for example, if I move up or down, you can see that the eyebrows are constantly moving with the eye. And there is a way in detailed mode that you can move just the eye, which I'll show in a minute. And you'll notice also for the uh, inner eye, you get that curved arrow again, so we can change the rotation of the eye. And then by hovering down on the outer edge or the bottom corner of the eyes, uh, you'll get this icon which looks like a double-sided arrow with two boxes. And it means by moving the mouse, the box will become smaller or larger, or in this case, uh, the eyes will become larger or smaller, and that's why I call it the enlarger tool. Uh, or I guess you can call it the shrinking tool if you want. Um, so you can make the eyes much bigger, or you can make them much smaller. And again, as I mentioned before already, the uh, defaults for this are very important because some of these have uh, an upper eyelid. Some of them also have um, darker bags under the eyes, uh, larger bags under the eyes. Some of them actually have none at all. This one has absolutely no upper eyelids that you can see pretty much. Um, so there's a whole bunch of different choices. This one has minimal amounts of uh, area under the eye. It also has minimal eyelashes, whereas this one has visible eyelashes. So that's just something to keep in mind. And also from the side, you can once again change the depth of the eyes on the face. In detailed mode, there are six different points you can change. There is the upper lid, the lower lid, the outer corner, the inner corner, the pupil, and the white of the eyes. So the top of the lid changes the height, and as well as the peak of the top lid by moving sideways. So you can see again, the peak shifts to the left, or I can shift it over to the right. And the same is true for the lower lid. You can shift the peak, and then you can also move it up, or down, or up. And the outer corner affects the length of the eye, as well as the angle. So you can pull it outward, you can push it inward, and you can also make the eyes more pointed in the end, or you can also droop them down. The inner corner changes the height, and also how wide the top of the eye is. So, for example, if I pull up or down, you can see the inner corner of the eye moving. If I move left and right, you can see that the eye sort of closes up or widens. It's kind of like how the upper lid, you can change the peak of it. Um, this one just adjusts how curved it is rather than the location of the peak though. And changing the pupil of the eye, um, you can change its location. You can move it up, you can move it down, or you can also make it larger or smaller by moving sideways. And then lastly, changing uh, the white of the eyes, you can grab the eyes and move them independently of the brows. So you'll see I'm moving them up and down right now, but the brows are staying in the exact same place. So for the nose, you again have all these important presets, and as I showed before, they affect the minimum and maximum. So that's very important that you pick a good one to begin with. Um, there are actually, for all the modes, there are a total of 12 points of manipulation uh, between standard and detail mode. So in standard mode, there are two from the front, and there are also two from the side. And from the front, the first is this one in the center, which changes the width of the nose, as well as the height of it. And the second one is if you move down to the outer corner right here, you'll get the enlarger tool again, and you can change the overall size of the nose. So from the side, there's the tip of the nose, as well as the bridge of the nose. And the tip just controls the length of the entire nose, including the bridge. And it also changes the height, just like the front. Uh, but hovering over the bridge, you see we get the angle tool again, and this changes the angle of the nose by moving sideways. So you can make it more pointed downward like that, or you can have it pointed upward like that. In detailed mode, we get a lot more options. So here in the front, Starting from the top and going down, there's the upper bridge, the bridge, the tip of the nose, 
the sides of the nose and the nostrils. And the upper bridge controls the width and the height. And the bridge, uh, you can do the same thing. You can change the width, uh, but not the height or anything like that. The tip also controls the width and the height. And same thing for the side of those. And then lastly, if you click down here, you can change and make the nostrils wider or more narrow. And still in the detailed mode from the side, again, there's the upper bridge, and oops, right here. And there's also the bridge and the tip. Uh, so here you can see uh, the section between the eyes again. Make it lower or higher. And the bridge changes the position of the peak of the bridge in the nose. So you can make it uh, force it outward or push it inward. And it's almost like changing the angle of it. One thing I almost forgot to mention is that you can also change not just the angle of the bridge, but you can also change the height of it. And then there's also the tip. So for the lips, I already went over before how the presets will affect the shape of the mouth. Uh, there's also one point to manipulate it from the front and also from the side in standard mode. So from the front we can change the width and the height. And from the side we can change the depth. In detailed mode, as I mentioned before, you have the upper lip or the cupid's bow. There's also the bottom lip and also the sides of the lip. So. Changing either the upper or the bottom lip, you can manipulate the thickness of it, as well as the width or the steepness of it. So if you pull it outward, you see it gets less steep. And this one, there's more of a peak. Same with the bottom lips. The bottom lip, rather. And then changing the corners will affect how much your sim smiles or frowns. Also in detailed mode, if you go to the side, you can change the depth of the upper lip as well as the lower lip. The cheekbones work the same whether you're in standard or detailed mode, and there's only one point of change. They simply change the height or the width, and in either mode they manipulate the exact same thing. So it doesn't really matter in this case which one you work with. From the side, you can change the depth of the cheekbones. And again, the same is true in detailed mode. The cheeks will change the height and the width of the cheeks, so you can see here. However, it also affects the jawline. This is true in both standard and detailed mode. And while they seem very similar, if you go into detailed mode, it will move a little bit more in terms of the width. So for example, if I pull these in as high as I can, and I go into detailed mode, I can actually move it just inward a little bit more. And same is true as outside. I move it out as far as I can, and I can still continue to move it out there. The jaw in standard mode has one point in the front that lets you change the height and also the width, but do take note that it will also move the mouth. So if you have the mouth in the perfect place and then you start messing with the jawline, just take note of that you might have to move the mouth back afterward. There is also, from the side, you can change the exact same thing. You can change the height, uh, but it, like most sideways things, you can also change the depth, but do note that this also changes the lower lip and also slightly the upper lip. So the chin is another part of the face where you're going to want to take note of the presets because they, some of them have this little dip that you can see in certain ones or an indentation and some of them do not. So it's just something you want to take note of. Um, like most parts of the face, you can adjust the height and the width. And from the side, you can change the depth and the height. You'll notice that the lower, the area below the lip moves slightly when you do this. If you go to do this in detail mode, uh, you can change the height and the depth without moving that area below the lip. 
The ears are not quite as moldable as I hoped they'd be. So you can adjust the height of them by pulling them up and down, as well as how far they stick out by moving them in and out. And it doesn't matter if you're doing this from the front or the back or the sides, it all seems to work the same. And in detailed mode, you can rotate the ears, like so. So unfortunately you can't do any of the pointed ears or anything like that, so no elves, no Vulcans, nothing like that unfortunately. And that's pretty much the entire face, and that's all for this tutorial. So now you know what the tools are, and in the next part I'll be giving some basic anatomy tips while building a Simmer 2 so you can see how all of it fits together. Thanks for watching. Bye.